for the last 15 years or so, I've been involved in uh, the position of the modern state of Israel in the community of nations. So uh, the Jewish people, when they come home to Israel, they uh, became the state of Israel in May 1948 in the midst of war. So the state of Israel is a Jewish state. It's a homeland for the Jewish people, but it's also the home for many non-Jews. For me, that's the beauty of Israel, that it's a place where Jews and non-Jews can live. But they're very isolated in the United Nations, in New York, in Geneva, in The Hague. Israel is very isolated. Nobody understands them. They're always criticized. They're always condemned. Uh, and it's worse, they're now being attacked because there are states, many states in the world, they don't want to see Israel exist, literally. That their agenda is to destroy the Jewish state of Israel. So we believe it's important that there's a voice, a non-Israeli voice, a non-Jewish voice, which is speaking into the governments, into the courts, into the international institutions which is saying Israel has a right to exist. It's not perfect, but the Jewish people have a right to exist as a nation just as any other nation. And yes, the Palestinians have a right to self-determination. Um, and there needs to be a resolution of that issue. But we shouldn't condemn Israel for existing. We shouldn't try to destroy it or delegitimize it, which is what is happening. So we're there to be a voice to say Israel has a right to be there. We explain how it came into existence, uh, that the Arabs and the non-Jewish people in Israel, their life is not too bad, actually. Christians have a much better life in Israel than they do in any other state in the Middle East. There's more freedom for people, whether you're Muslim or Christian or Jew. You have a freedom of religion, you have a freedom of existence in Israel, which you don't have in Saudi Arabia, you don't have it in Jordan or Lebanon or Syria or any of these countries. So let's, let's nourish and protect this democracy. Again, I, I say it's far from perfect, but it, it's, a, it's a miraculous country, which is, has so much to, to give and which is giving to the world. And, and we want to stand up and, and, and speak out into the nations about this. So I, the question we're asking is, what, what is the two-state solution? We hear about it all the time, don't we? Our political leaders are always talking about, we support the two-state solution. Well, what they're talking about is creating what's called a state of Palestine next to the state of Israel, west of the Jordan River. Now, if you've been to Israel, if you've been there, you know this is a tiny little piece of land, smaller than the Netherlands, where I live. And the Netherlands is a very small country in Europe. So we're, the world wants to divide this tiny little piece of land into two states. Why do they want to do that? Because they say that the non-Jewish residents, people who live there also have a right to a state. This all happened because 100 years ago, the Ottoman Turkish Empire collapsed. The Ottomans had control over most of the Middle East. It's a little bit like the British had control of Africa with the Germans and the Spanish. And so out of that old system, you have to create something new. We move from a situation of empires into a situation of states. 20th century, we created modern states. Most of the states in the world today didn't exist 100 years ago. They've, they have emerged out of some colonial system or something. So for better or for worse, the Allied powers decided to basically divide up the Middle East into states or regions which would become states. Uh, same with Africa and actually parts of Europe uh, and the rest of the world. Now, 
Uh, it's not a perfect system, but states were created. So today you have Syria, you have Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon. They were all created the same way. And the state of Israel also was created out of this system. The thing about Israel is it was explicitly a state for the Jewish people to have a national homeland. It was the place where they could exist as a Jewish nation. But it was also said every person, Jew and non-Jew, has a right to live there as an equal citizen. The Arabs didn't like that. They still don't like it. They don't like the idea of the Jews having a homeland and having sovereignty. So they say the Arabs in this area, which was called Palestine, should also have their own state. Now, Israel says, okay, that's fine, but we need to exist as well. We were created legitimately. Israel is a state for the Jewish people. It's also a state for the Arabs in Israel. But we need to exist. We need to have secure borders. We're not willing to allow a state to come into existence next to us that's going to keep destroying us and firing rockets at us and sending terrorists into our territory. We can't have that. I think that's fair enough. So that's why this whole idea of two states is not really working because the state that people want to create, the state of Palestine, is governed by the Palestinian Liberation Organization and Hamas. What is their agenda? To destroy Israel. That's their whole purpose of existing, was they were created to destroy the state of Israel. So how can you create a state in order to destroy another state? And that's why Israel says we, we're willing to negotiate we're willing to talk, but we're not willing to allow you to create something which is trying to destroy us. And that's why the whole process has ground to a halt. There are no negotiations. There were treaties and agreements, the Oslo agreements in the 1990s between Israel and the PLO. Uh, the Palestinians have a large degree of autonomy. The Palestinian Authority was created. That is their government. So actually the Palestinians almost have a state of their own, uh, but it's not really a state. So we don't yet have a two-state solution. And a lot of our political leaders, they keep repeating this mantra about creating a Palestinian state when they know it's totally unrealistic at the moment, unless and until the Palestinians drop their uh, their hatred of the Jewish people and will accept the legitimate existence of Israel, I think. So I think it's, it's, it's not a good thing to keep repeating this because it's not good for the Palestinians. They're kept in a kind of limbo where they're neither, that they don't have a state to call their own. Was actually there are polls done where most Palestinians would rather be part of the state of Israel than part of a Palestinian state. But they can't say that publicly because they get their heads chopped off. I don't think it's a legal issue. I think it's a political issue. Uh, but I think it's an important issue because a sovereign state decides for itself where its capital is, okay? So I live in the Netherlands and they believe and they've decided Amsterdam is the capital uh, of the Netherlands. I'm an Australian citizen. The capital of Australia is Canberra. Now that's the sovereign right of Australia to, to decide. So if Israel is a sovereign state, it has a right to say where it's capital is. In 1980, Israel declared that Jerusalem is the undivided capital of the state of Israel. And the Security Council said, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that because you are occupying Eastern Jerusalem, which belongs to the Arabs. 
So we don't allow you to have Jerusalem as your undivided capital. We think it's illegal. We think it's null and void. So they said all the nations should move their capitals out from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. So they did. All of them. Except one, maybe. So that's what happened. Now, Israel has always said, well, Jerusalem is our capital. Our government is there. Our courts are there. Our administration is there. That is our, the focus point of our nation is Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv. So other nations are now starting to decide, well, yes, they, Israel is a sovereign state. It has a right. Even if you accept that East Jerusalem is disputed, which many states don't agree with, I don't agree with. I think Israel has a right to have whole of Jerusalem as a sovereign, uh, as part of its sovereign state. But even still, so when President Trump moved the American embassy to West Jerusalem, he didn't move it to East Jerusalem, but to West Jerusalem. Everybody said, oh, you can't do that because it's against the Security Council. Well, I think he can do that. He's simply recognizing the right of a sovereign state to declare and to position its capital where it wants to. And I think you have an obligation to respect that decision as a nation. That's, that's about the sovereign equality of, of states. Many Christians say, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. The Bible says it. Um, I think it's uh, uh, the famous story also of Balaam and Balak. Um, so th th there is somehow there's a biblical principle that those who bless Zion will be, will be blessed. And I think I believe that. I think that there's always a blessing in... Uh, honoring and respecting God's authority, the way he does things. It's the same in marriage. It's the same in other relations uh, that we have. If you respect your government, take a godly position, then I think there's a blessing uh, in that. doesn't mean your life will be easy. You might even be persecuted by your government, but there's a blessing in it. Uh, and I think it's the same with, with Israel. And I think it even goes further that if you look historically, the nations that have blessed Israel have been blessed. And those that have cursed Israel have suffered. So all the empires that destroyed Jerusalem and, and killed the Jewish people and so forth, uh, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the, uh, the Persians, the Romans, the Byzantines, the Mamluks, the Crusaders, uh, the Ottoman Turkish Empire, they've all disappeared. The Jewish people have survived. And I think the nations of the world that curse Israel, uh, there's, there's a judgment of God which will be, which will be on them. So what is land for peace? What does this mean? I think this is a term which came into existence after 1967. Israel won back these territories. From Israel's perspective, they won them back from the Arabs. From the Arab perspective, Israel invaded them and took them from the Arabs. So there's a conflict about who owns the territories. Um, Israel said after 67, we defensively conquered these territories. We're going to keep hold of them and we're going to negotiate with the Arabs for a peace treaty. You attacked us, we're holding the land and we will reach a peace treaty with you. So we are willing to give land for peace. We are willing to give up the land that we have conquered in this war, which you started because you attacked us. We are willing which is remarkable in itself because most people who win territory, they don't give it back. 
When the Germans conquered the territories in the Second World War, they didn't give it back. When Russia conquers territory, it doesn't give it back. But when Israel defensively won territory, they said, we want peace. And we're even willing to give up the land, even land that we think belongs to us, we will give up for peace because we want peace so badly. So that's why they've given the Sinai Desert back to Egypt. Um, they have been willing on many occasions to give back the Golan Heights to Syria or, or, or hand over the Golan Heights to Syria. Um, and now the discussion is about Judea and Samaria, which clearly belongs to the heartland of Israel, I think, because of the mandate, not to do with the Bible, but just legally Israel uh, has a claim, a, a strong sovereign claim to the West Bank because it's part of the mandate for Palestine. But nevertheless, Israel says we, we have been prepared to give up land for peace. Now, that was, that was the case until maybe 10 years ago when Israel realized we're not going to get peace if we give up land. 2005, Israel withdrew from the Gaza Strip unilaterally. They gave up land. Did they get peace? No. What did they get? Rockets, warfare, tunnels, terror, so Israel's learned that land for peace is not working. So now they say, we, you give us peace, we'll give you land. So it's become peace for land.